top ones. So if you want to have a vitamin supplement, there it is. That's the best vitamin supplement in the world. It gives you a balanced combination of all these components and uh, is what we really need. Phytochemical research and health is booming in the world today. And there's a lot of argument about this issue. But I thought it would be perhaps a good idea if we went through this little exercise together. What is a phytochemical? Phyto is plant, chemical is a chemical, so a phytochemical are chemicals in plants. That's basically what it means. And in plants, besides the nutrients like the carbohydrates, the fats and the proteins, you have a lot of these phytochemicals. And some of these phytochemicals are anti-carcinogenic. They fight cancer and they prevent diseases. So phytoestrogen, for example, is a very important phytochemical. And many plant foods contain phytoestrogens. Now don't get confused. A phytoestrogen is not the same as a normal estrogenic hormone in the female. Women produce estrogen, the female hormone, and men that consume phytoestrogen won't suddenly become effeminate. Definitely not. These chemicals are similar to estrogens, but they're not the same. Now, a woman, for example, in menopause will have all kinds of symptoms that are debilitating. And so she will go to the doctor and the doctor will prescribe hormone replacement therapy. Isn't that right? And he will prescribe estrogens to replace the natural estrogens that have been taken out of the system. What happens then is that you are supplying a synthetic or extracted estrogen to take the place of what you have lost. And it has been found that that estrogen is carcinogenic. And so your risk of breast cancer is greatly increased when you take those type of estrogens. Now plants contain natural estrogens, which are not like mammalian estrogens, but they compete for the binding site, and strangely enough, these are anti-carcinogenic. And so women and men need these phytoestrogens in their diets. Health benefits of diets rich in phytoestrogens would include, for example, prevention of breast cancer. Gentlemen, in case you thought that that only applied to women, prostate cancer and other cancers are prevented by phytoestrogens. Heart disease and stroke, osteoporosis, menopausal symptoms, brain diseases linked to aging, Alzheimer's, and all of these can be retarded greatly by phytoestrogens, alcoholism. If you were an alcoholic and you have to overcome the negative effects, then phytoestrogens can help. And inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, all of these are benefited by diets rich in phytoestrogens. So you really want to get those into your diet. They are what we call nature's designer estrogens. Imbalances in estrogen are strongly linked to many major Western diseases, including heart disease, cancer, prostate, and breast cancer. And excess estrogen, that's normal estrogen that you would get in hormone replacement therapy, therapy for example, can promote the growth of cancers. And you want to prevent that. So what can women do for example, if they want to have a normal, relatively normal, healthy lifestyle when they get into their menopausal years without taking all these medications that can be so we'll come to that in a moment. So this is your anti-cancer diet. Have a look at it. There it is. Anything that's a legume, particularly try and include soy, which is one of the richest. The African diet typically consists of grains and legumes. That's it, and some greens. And they had none of the Western lifestyle diseases and still they became urbanized. So here are your grains and your legumes in a typical African market, none of those diseases. Today, one of the worst cases of sudden increase in disease in the world is found in urbanized Africa. 
Nuts and seeds, sprouts, these are anti-cancer foods. There's your anti-cancer garlic. This is potent anti-cancer food. Anything that you see on that list, and that list, and that list, all of it is anti-cancer food. Can you see, none of it looks like a tablet. That means you actually have to start doing things with food rather than substituting with a tablet and learn to start living life with these foods. So the high anti-cancer foods are garlic, cabbage, licorice, soybeans, ginger, and carrots, celery, and parsnips. The medium ones are onions, herb teas, turmeric, citrus, whole wheat, flax, brown rice, tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, and all of the rest of the cabbage families beside cabbage itself. And then you can add there some of your grains and your condiments. So here's a summary of findings. Phytoestrogens and breast cancer. There is a wealth of evidence that phytoestrogens are protective against breast cancer. And here's a little graph for you in terms of prostate cancer. And breast cancer is very similar. This is the incidence of prostate cancer in China, South Korea, and Japan, as opposed to the UK, Australia, and the USA. It's pretty bad, eh? So, wow. Would one like to get prostate cancer? It's not a very nice cancer to have. So what's the difference? Why does China have such a low incidence, South Korea and Japan, and the Western countries look like that? Bowel cancer, high intakes of soybeans and tofu give an 80% reduced risk of cancer of the rectum and the lower bowels. 80%. Phytoestrogens can reduce the number of crypts, those are the little places that become inflamed and eventually form little tumors. Phytoestrogens may be effective only in blocking the early rather than the late stages. So you want to start having a lifestyle as soon as possible. And kids must learn to like these things. This is an interesting study that was done on skin cancer. You know, today they're telling you the sun is getting worse and worse, time to wear wide-brimmed hats, don't they? In Australia it became a law that you had to wear a wide-brimmed hat. They've taken that law away again now, I hear. Now why is that? Because people are getting more and more cancer. Here's what happens. Phytoestrogens can protect against the harmful effects of UV from the sun. In a study performed by the U.S. Army, it was found that rats exposed to lethal doses of x-rays all survived if they were fed phytoestrogens in their diet, whereas those eating regular food all died. So phytoestro the phytoestrogen genistein blocks the growth of skin cancer cells called B16 melanoma cells in mice. So here is a substance in the food that prevents skin cancer. And you can get it from uh, soy foods. Remember this one over here. We'll talk more about genistein. Genistein is a very important component. It is as good in many cases as hormone replacement therapy that you get from the doctor. Estrogens have a protective effect on the brain. Alzheimer's disease. There are two main types of Alzheimer's. Early onset, which strikes anywhere from the age of 30 to 70. I know someone who's just 40 years old, who's got Alzheimer's disease, and uh, you have to pen him in. He's like a child. He'll get undressed and he'll start walking down the street naked. It's pretty bad. And he's only 40 years old. And he was a headmaster of a school. And appears to be genetic often runs in family. More commonly, Alzheimer occurs late in life. It's more sporadic. And it is about 1.5 times more common in women than in men. And it seems to be more common in people living in urban rather than rural areas. Why? It's a diet question. Now, why is it more common in women than in men? You see, women have high estrogen levels. And then when they get older, when they start going into menopause, Estrogen levels drop. They crash. And then they get the menopause symptoms, and then they get hormone replacement therapy from the doctors, which are carcinogenic. And the whole, the whole idea is actually very detrimental. 
Now, because their hormone levels drop so low, the protection that the brain needs, estrogens, is removed and they're more prone to Alzheimer's disease. Men also have estrogen. We have everything a woman has. We just don't have the high levels that a woman has. But the man's estrogen level doesn't drop throughout his lifetime. It stays relatively constant. So we don't have that time period when we get old, when estrogen levels suddenly drop. And that's why men have a protection against Alzheimer's disease. Cancer of the uterus, there's a 54% reduction if you have foods high in phytochemicals. Stomach cancer, regions in Japan that have high tofu intake, for example, have the lowest rates of stomach cancer. If they eat a lot of salted fish, for example, they have high incidence of cancer. If they eat a lot of tofu, they don't have the cancer. Uh, it also boosts antioxidants. For example, vitamin C and vitamin E, phytoestrogens also work as antioxidants and they prevent us from making the bad kind of cholesterol known as LDL cholesterol. So, very, very good. It also improves the flexibility of the blood vessels. In your blood vessels, there are muscles and all kinds of layers and the blood vessel has to remain flexible as you get older, it gets impregnated with fats and it gets less flexible. Well, if you have phytoestrogens in your diet, you can even get back to your normal responsiveness. So normally, as you get older, because the blood vessel gets less and less flexible, your blood pressure starts rising. If you have lots of phytoestrogens in your diet, your blood pressure can stay low. And that's very, very nice to have a low blood pressure. Low blood pressure that is detrimental is one when you get up you're dizzy, you don't know what's going on. But a low blood pressure where you don't get dizzy means your blood vessels are still flexible. That's good. Phytoestrogens also help bone. Like estrogens, they make bone dissolving osteoclasts less active. You have two types of cells in your bone working. The one is an osteoblast that builds calcium into the bone. The other one is the osteoclast that takes calcium out of the bone. So if you have phytoestrogens in your diet, the ones that break down the bone become less active, and so you don't lose as much calcium from the bone. Menopause, reduced heart flushes, dryness of the reproductive tract, uh, cholesterol levels, bones, skin condition, brain function, all of these are helped by phytoestrogens. 70% drop in estrogen levels when a woman goes into menopause. And so they get hormone replacement therapy, as I said, which has many side effects. And I would like to do a little quiz with you now to see how well you fare in terms